Hello everyone, this is Craig Chamberlain with the PC Michiana Tech Help Show, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to transform your computer into a web server so that you can write your own websites and build them and, and kind of play around with them before you put them on the web. Now, this is a very easy thing to do. I'm planning on building a couple sites over the next month or so, and that's kind of why I decided to do this series so I can kind of bring you on that journey with me. Now in this first video, we're going to do something very straightforward, like I said, we need to turn your computer into a web server so that we can actually build our website on your computer. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it will be very clear to you probably by the end of this video. Now, all a web server is, is it's a normal computer, but it has software on it that allows it to serve web pages to people who type in an address into their browser, such as this browser address bar up here. Now what we're going to do is we're only going to make it available offline so that we can access our web page that we're building through our browser using this start menu bar and so that we can build on it from that point on. All the tools you will need are at my website. That's pcmichiana.com in the free download section and everything is going to be free for this part of the... Well, everything's basically going to be free. <laughs> I'm not charging for anything. If you scroll down, uh, these are all the downloads I've collected over the years as an IT geek. And if you scroll down to the web browser section, there is an option called, oh, I'm sorry, not web browsers, web design. Uh, select the XAMPP hosting suite. We're going to be using that. We also need to download the WordPress blog software, but we're going to do that after the fact. So let's go ahead and select the XAMPP hosting suite. And then I'm going to select to download it. And this particular page here, you can click on either of these links. It will bring you to the XAMPP for Windows homepage. And then you can scroll down to the download section and we want to download XAMPP. Brings you to the XAMPP for Windows 1.77. In this case, obviously if you're watching this video, you might have a later version out. We're going to download the installer. That way it's a standalone installer for Windows. So go ahead and select installer. And you'll be redirected to the SourceForge page and it'll start your download within five seconds and then just collect, collect, select save. Once your download's complete, just select the link to open it and select run. The installer will come up, go ahead and choose your language. It might give you this warning if you have user account control deactivated, just select okay. And then to install it, we're just gonna click next and make sure you remember this folder. I'll show it again to you later, but C colon slash XAMPP. This is where all your websites are gonna be stored when you go to develop them. So I'm just gonna leave that the same and click next. And we want to create an XAMPP desktop icon and an Apache friend start menu item. Just leave the default settings and click install. Now once the installation is complete, just select the finish button. And it's going to ask you if you want to start the control panel. I'll go ahead and give it a shot. Sometimes it doesn't open immediately, but I'll just click yes. It does look like the control panel started up pretty good. So now I just select that, open it up. And we want to click the start button next to Apache, which is your web server. It's going to ask you for permission to allow access to it. I'm going to go ahead and say private networks only and select allow access. And then on the right hand side you want to click the start button next to MySQL and that's your database server. We'll go into more details on these later. And it says that both of them are running. Obviously it's going to ask you for permission again for the Windows firewall. Select allow access again. And now that both of them are running, it's a very simple way to test your actual web server to see what's going on and whether it's installed correctly. Go ahead and minimize that. Open up your favorite web browser. It can be Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, however you like to do it. And then all you need to do is type in HTTP colon slash slash like you would any other website. But instead of typing in the website address, type in local host and then press enter. And this is your actual web server. Now what's happening here is you sent that request to localhost, which is your local computer. And since your computer has a web server installed on it now, it responds to that request by serving the default website that comes with this XAMPP package. So I'm gonna select the English language because we wanna make sure that the functionality is all running correctly on your XAMPP server. As you can see, this installs PHP, and PHP is a scripting language that's required for most websites now. And we wanna select PHP Info on the left-hand side here to test the PHP and make sure it's working. 
If you see here, it says PHP version 5.38, and if you get results here, basically your website PHP is working correctly, otherwise you get a blank page here. You wouldn't get anything. Next thing we want to check here on the left-hand side is under Tools. We want to click the My PHP My Admin so that we can test your database server. Go ahead and select that. And as you can see, it actually loaded up the page, which is a good sign. And it, asks, it thinks it's in German, but it's not. But I'm just going to say nope for, uh, for Google Chrome there. Wait, maybe it is in German. That's kind of weird. I'm going to select the drop down here and uh, change it to English. I don't know why I would do that. But now it actually shows me that all my websites here, my database is functioning correctly. So far, my XAMPP server has been successfully installed. One more important thing I need to tell you here so that you can actually start building your website is that you should go to your computer and your C drive. Remember how we talked about before we wanted to make note of where it installed to? It installed it to C colon slash XAMPP, right? So this is the folder that it installed your web server to. Go ahead and open that up. And this is the folder you want to look at, most importantly, htdocs. This is your website root folder. That's what they called it. Basically, this is where all your websites are going to reside. So I'm going to create my first website here. It's going to be really awesome. I'm just kidding. I'm just going to go to New and Create a Folder. I right-clicked, by the way. Click New and Create Folder. And I'm going to type in My Test Website. Make it all one word, and I'm going to show you why here in a little bit. I press Enter. Now I'm going to open up that folder. I'm going to right-click again. I'm going to say New. And I'm going to create a text document. And I'm going to say index.htm and then delete the .txt afterwards and press enter. Ask if you're sure you want to change it. Say yes. And then right click on that and click edit. I know we're going through a lot of funny words here. Uh, well, that's going to edit using Word. I don't like that. Right click on it and instead of doing edit, I'm going to say open with notepad. So now I can actually write in my HTML code here. Don't worry, we're not going to be doing that anytime later. But I'm just going to type in the word test. File, save, and then close it. And now, as you can see up here, I'm in the XAMPP folder slash htdocs slash my test website. Make special note of that, okay? I'm going to go back up here, and rather than type in HTTP localhost slash PHP my admin slash index. I want to do localhost, which is my computer, slash my first website, that's the folder we created, slash test.htm, and press enter. Uh oh, it didn't find it. Hang on one second. I must have typed something wrong. Oh, it wasn't test.htm, it was index.htm. That's why. Let's do index.htm and press enter. Again, I screwed it up again and this is giving you guys a good lesson as to how important it is to make sure you type in the right thing. It's actually my test website, not my first website. <laughs> and I'm going to type in test website and press enter. There we go, there's my test. Now if I right click on this page and I click view page source, that's my code that I typed into that page. What I'm trying to point out here is that this local host is that directory, that C colon slash XAMPP slash htdocs. That's just that local host folder on your browser. Then you just type in slash whatever folder you created and slash whatever website page you're going you're gonna to be loading after you've designed it. It's a very important thing to understand before we move forward with installing WordPress because you're, you're, you now understand how your web server is looking at your file system. As soon as you type in localhost slash, your computer, since the software's installed, knows to look in those folders to find those appropriate files for rendering. Now that's how to turn your computer into a web server so that you can build web pages. Now I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned to the future videos. I'm going to show you guys actually how to install WordPress and create your own website using free software tools. And it's going to be capable of becoming a very, very professional and sophisticated website. And it's very easy to do. A lot of people don't do it because they're intimidated by the concept. But I promise you that you won't be disappointed and you'll be pretty happy with how it turns out. Thanks for stopping by. And if you have any other questions or have any problems, remember if you go to my website, that's PCMichiana.com, and you select on community, select on, click on community forum. I do have a free web forum here for all users. Um, you don't, all you have to do is register your email and a username, and you can type in any questions you might have. I'll do the best I can to help you. 
I am busy, full-time job and all that, but I'll get to it when I can. Thanks again.